Live from KSA 12, the night beat starts right now. A local business getting attention for all the wrong reasons. Neighbors and leaders are sounding off after yet another incident of anti-Semitism. And at least three carjacking cases right here in San Antonio in the past two and a half weeks. What would you do if you're confronted by a carjacker? The advice from law enforcement coming up. But first, the cold and rain just keep coming tonight. Let's check in with Adam Kasky. And these low clouds, they continue to develop showers that then move through town periodically. Intermittent rain is what we're still dealing with. Now, the brunt of it currently, and just for now, is just east and southeast of San Antonio. We're talking Hallettsville, down toward Cuero, Yorktown, Kennedy. This is another round of heavy rainfall that's moving through your neck of the woods. Already over an inch of rain in some of those locations. And we'll keep adding to it as we go through the night. Looking locally, particularly around San Antonio, right now, the action is mainly on the south side of town particularly along and south of Highway 90 here and between 410 and 1604 on the far south side. These little showers, see how they're separated apart? They'll continue to pop up and just come and go periodically through the rest of the night and even into the morning commute tomorrow. And now the activity off to the west starting to calm down just a little bit. Temperatures are down considerably. 46 Bernie, 46 Lotus, 49 in Comfort, only 54 at Port SA and 56 in Pleasanton. It's going to be a cool day tomorrow. I'll tell you how cold and break it down across our area. Wind temperatures rebound and take a look at the rainfall totals in just a bit. Thank you, Adam. It can happen like that. So how do you stay safe in parking lots? Tonight on the Night Beat, we are looking into ways that you can protect yourself after a violent attempted carjacking left one woman with serious injuries. The story that we talk, talk, talked to you about last night and we brought it to you as breaking news that crime happening outside of Whole Foods in the Alamo Quarry Market. Now, San Antonio police arrested this man who you see on your screen, Julio Cesar Rivera II. Now, police are searching for another suspect from a different carjacking at North Star Mall. That one happened October 18th. And then there was a third case where police believe someone tried to steal a vehicle before killing a man on Ermine Boulevard. That's three carjackings in less than three weeks. All are separate cases. Now the night team's Lee Waldman is live this evening. And Lee, you spoke with a police officer who says that your eyes and voice are really the best defense when it comes to this. Yeah, that's especially right if you're in a dark parking lot like this one. Put down your phone, take a look at what's happening around you, and use your voice if someone comes up to you that you don't know. We know that crime happens everywhere and to everyone. It's a frightening but harsh reality. No one can predict where a violent crime is going to happen or who will be the next victim. The latest to shake our city, a woman shot in the face during an attempted carjacking at the Alamo Quarry Market. It's a little bit of shock, you know, not really believing that this stuff can happen in, in those types of areas. Patrol Sergeant Matt Shima with the Cibolo Police Department says a crime like that, while jarring, opens our eyes. That's step one in protecting yourself. In today's world, we're so focused on our phones that we're not aware of what's going on around us, whether it's people or cars, anything like that. So just getting out of the phone, putting it down, and being aware of surroundings. Next, use your voice. Get loud if you're approached by someone you don't know. Saying something out loud like, hey, who are you? Or get away from me or something really loud that alerts people that, that are around the area to watch out for what's going on. We are built with fight or flight instincts. If you can create distance between yourself and a potential threat, that's the best course of action. But if not, fighting back is not recommended unless you have proper training. If they are not you know, trained in fighting and trained in firearm use, just give them the property because what's more important is their life and not their property. Property can be replaced, but people can't. Sergeant Shima says it's also important to be a good witness. If you see something off or you hear an argument happening in a parking lot, take note, and if you need to, call 911. Live in San Antonio, Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Lee. A massive amount of evidence leading to another delay in the trial for an Air Force major accused of killing his wife. The pandemic first pushed back the trial for Andre McDonald. Now prosecutors want items like McDonald's military work computers to be submitted before a trial can actually begin. The problem I have is it's been over, I think he's, correct me if I'm wrong, counsels, but he's been almost two and a half years in custody and then they're just getting him all this stuff right now.
McDonald's wife Andreen killed in 2019. Investigators later found her remains on a ranch about six miles from the couple's home. A new hearing scheduled for early next month. The delay leading to another bond reduction for McDonald from $550,000 to $250,000. Disgusted and upset. That's how neighbors in southwest San Antonio feel after a nearby business displays an anti-Semitic sign making fun of how Jewish people were killed during the Holocaust. Now, there are pictures of that banner all over social media, but we're not going to show them to you tonight because as you're about to see, neighbors and leaders say that hate has no place in our community. That is really actually a shock. It's not the kind of thing that people in this or any section of San Antonio were used to seeing. A business displaying an anti-Semitic banner. This one had a swastika and joked about the cruel way that Jews were killed in concentration camps. This is algo muy feo. We went to the budget automotive repair shop on Quintana Road today looking for answers. Nobody was there and no one picked I'm up the sorry. phone. Also, the sign was gone. We don't know exactly when it was taken down, but a rep with Councilwoman Terry Castillo's office told us that it was up as recently as yesterday. Neighbors aren't ready to move past it. I'm actually really upset. Really, if anything disgusted because I mean, like, what the heck? That's the same reaction people in a Northside neighborhood had last week when a group dropped off anti-Semitic flyers outside their homes. Everyone who spoke with KSAT said it was wrong. Councilwoman Castillo, who represents this section of San Antonio, released a statement saying in part, quote, we are horrified by the anti-Semitic signage that appeared this week on a Southside business. This hate speech has no place in our neighborhoods. Now people are hoping to never see anything that hateful ever again. They say point blank, it's not welcome in San Antonio. Anybody putting out that stuff is like it's uncalled for. Now we did speak with local Jewish leaders who are aware of that banner. They're denouncing it and in response, they plan to hold a community event for everyone because they want to prove how open and loving San Antonio is to all groups. The shots available children across the country as young as five years old now eligible to get the COVID-19 vaccine. Some of those children got their first dose right here in San Antonio. It includes the Children's Hospital of San Antonio. Well, one family got their little ones vaccinated today. Eligible children will also be able to get the vaccine at Metro Health's mass vaccination site at the Alamo Dome. That's going to start next week. Metro Health's outreach team hitting the ground today, spending the day delivering accurate information about the vaccine. They don't know what's in the actual vaccine, and, and that's where we try to kind of just educate them. Now, studies found this vaccine to be nearly 91% effective in preventing symptomatic illness in young children. San Antonio ISD teaming up with South Texas allergy and asthma medical professionals to get pediatric vaccines to students who register for the program. University Health began registering children for vaccines at Wonderland of the Americas site as well. New tonight, we are looking at green waste, and it involves these green bins that you see right here. The night team's Patty Santos explains this new technology that's unique to San Antonio and how it's turning up clean compost for the city. Napkins, paper towels, a paper bag, just wrap it all up and just stick it in your green cart. And it comes to us, it's here. The Nelson Gardens in the southwest part of the county and the Atlas Organics Recycling Center is where all of San Antonio's green waste bins end up. We don't want to see something of value be thrown away in the landfill forever and ever, but be reused and turned into a product that can be reused. 2019 waste studies showed that almost 45% of great cart trash ending up in the landfill was organic material and could have been recycled. So the city of San Antonio turned to Athletes Organics for a solution. In January, it entered into a new 10-year contract with a company which hopes to boost compost production. This is the first sort line of its kind at an organics, at a composting facility. It's brand new technology. The sort line is tackling the problem of non-organic matter that ends up in green bins. Without taking this trash out, the product isn't truly organic. See how it works. Organic material gets loaded and shredded in the sort line. Where people in air sensor technology removes about 75% of non-organic trash. Not only is it a, a product quality standard necessity, it's also an operational necessity to keep our equipment functioning 
and doing what it needs to do. The end result, cleaner organic compost that is sold back to residents. The technology has been used in material recycling centers, but it's the first time being used at a compost facility. It's a really good product and it's one that's not made with manure, it's not made with sewage sludge. We wanted to put the compost to the test, so we're going to load some up and we're going to take it home and see what it does. This year so far, the city has collected more than 73,000 tons of organic material, compared to over 50,000 tons last year. It's a product that the citizens of San Antonio are helping to create when they use their green cart properly. And the city is gearing up for a push to get more of your uh, table scraps to end up in a compost instead of a landfill. And this is where you do your part. They want to see more of your leftover food, like uh, peels and table scraps, nuts, grains, coffee filter, to end up in the green bin instead of the trash. So if you want to buy some of the compost we just showed you, head to ksat.com. Stephania, Steve? All right, Patty, before you go, we heard one of your plants wasn't doing so well. Now you're trying out that compost on your own plant. Yeah, we saw you uh, putting on gloves, getting some of that. How is that going? It's only a week into the science experiment, so we're going to keep an eye on it and let you know how that works out. Keep an eye on the Twitter. All right, looking forward to that, Patty. Thank you so much. Now, still ahead on the night beat, one preschool student in San Antonio fights cancer. We have followed her story for months, and now her mother is providing an update. That's coming up. And President Joe Biden faced with several political challenges. The changes now being brought back into a spending measure. All that is coming up. And was it an accident or sabotage? One lawyer announcing a new claim in that shooting on a movie set. That story, next on The Night Beat. More allegations over that movie set shooting in New Mexico, and now a lawyer for the woman in charge of the weapons on that set is looking into the possibility of sabotage. We're afraid that could have been what happened here, that somebody intended to sabotage this set with a live round intentionally placed in a box of dummies. Now, last month, Alec Baldwin fired what he thought was a prop gun. It contained a live bullet, which killed cinematographer Helena Hutchins. Now, some have asked whether workers on the set followed safety protocols. No one's been charged, but authorities are still investigating what happened. President Joe Biden facing a number of political setbacks. His infrastructure and spending plans stalling in Congress. His party struggling at the polls. The Republicans, Glenn Youngkin, actually winning, Youngkin rather, actually winning against Democratic former Governor Terry McAuliffe in the Virginia governor's race. In New Jersey, the Democrat barely won re-election. Both states have numerous suburban swing voters. Meanwhile, Speaker Nancy Pelosi reintroducing four weeks of paid family and medical leave to the spending measure, jeopardizing its support in the Senate. It is a tradition. The holiday countdown underway, 52 days until Christmas, 22 days until Thanksgiving, and crews are already preparing for the annual Raul Jimenez Thanksgiving dinner, a tradition that's been going on for more than 40 years. Volunteers all coming together to provide a hot meal for the holiday. Now, similar to last year, Meals on Wheels will help deliver turkey, stuffing, sides, and dessert. The goal is to deliver 10,000 meals, excuse me, 12,000 meals. You can sign up to help in this effort on KSAT.com. All right, now we want to keep the mood up. We have more good news to tell you. Do you remember this little girl, Amy Markovsky? Well, we told you about her in April after she was diagnosed with leukemia. She is still getting cancer and treatments, but her cancer is in remission. We are so happy to tell you that Amy is healthy enough to go back to school. Look at her there. Her mom shared that picture that you see right there on Facebook. She started pre-K at Holy Spirit, and you can see just how excited she is. Amy's mother says that she loves school, and being healthy enough to be in the classroom is a huge milestone. Amy, I know that you're not watching right now because it's too late, <laughs> but we are rooting for you. Amy, Amy. Yeah, there you go. Great news. <laughs> All right, live cam outside, 51 degrees right now. I know this may be nothing, to, you know, for some of us, for some of us, uh, but, but this is a, this is a legitimate cold front. 
Yeah, yeah. It's you, you can't just wear a light jacket. It's it's definitely more than like sweater weather, right, Adam? Uh, absolutely. And you know, it's tomorrow. We're not going to see much of a temperature jump. So take a look at our high temperature forecast here for the next several days. Tomorrow, the warmest we should get is about 55 degrees in the afternoon. So jacket weather all day long. Friday we break back into the 60s, and by Saturday and Sunday we're talking 70s. At that point, the average high is 76, and we'll be there by Sunday. Let's take a look at the radar. We still have some activity out there, and I do like to point out the little lines that you see pop up on the screen. They do indicate areas of lightning. You look in Guadalupe County, widely separated and scattered downpours out there, the red and yellow indicating the heaviest rainfall. Even within San Antonio, you go just on the west side of town, downtown all the way to Lackland, right along Highway 90, some heavy rainfall east of San Antonio. Uh, you see that's where we have the most persistent rain again. Hallettsville, Lavaca County, we're talking Moulton, Shiner, Gonzales, even down toward Cuero, Yorktown, and stretching into Kennedy right now. This is the moderate to heavy rainfall. Those little lines on the screen, those indicate the cloud to ground lightning strikes out there. There's a few of them, not a whole lot of lightning, but a little bit. West of San Antonio, Medina County, a few pockets of lightning and thunder with those downpours. These will continue to develop and come and go throughout the night. Nothing left over along the Rio Grande, just a little bit west of I-35. And here's the big picture where you see those lightning strikes over the past 15 minutes. Now, these are the rainfall estimates by the Doppler radar. Pretty good coverage today across our area. But I always like to point out the jackpot and the sweet spot, and that is in southeastern Kerr County, right between Comfort, Center Point, Cap Verde, then you down to the Bandera County line, over three inches estimated by the Doppler radar. So good coverage of rainfall. Glance at the map really quickly. Try to find your location. See how much rain. Canyon Lake 1.22, Bernie 1.18, Stone Oak about an inch, Stinson just over an inch of rainfall, and some of that in the sweet spot to recharge the aquifer. It's already up today and still responding. So as I mentioned, these showers coming and going through the night and even the morning commute 1 a.m. Here we get to 6, 7 a.m. We'll have some more pockets of rainfall. And then once we get to about the noon hour tomorrow, that's when it should taper off and we're just left with the low clouds and colder temperatures. So if you like this chill in the air, tomorrow's a good day for you all day long. 52 now dew point of 49. Of course, the humidity has gone a little bit of a breeze out of the north. We're noticing that and you look at where the air, the wind is coming from North Texas. Temperatures in the 40s, 47 Abilene and Dallas, so it's just reinforcing our cool air. The cold front has passed through our entire area. At 6 o'clock, Laredo Corpus, we're near 80 degrees. That's not the case anymore. Tomorrow morning, near 50 for most of us. By the afternoon, we're talking only 57 in Uvalde, Canyon Lake 54, Timberwood Park, a high of 53 degrees, and downtown San Antonio, about 55. So those low clouds lingering throughout the day tomorrow after a bit of a damp morning commute. Sun returns on Friday with those rebounding temperatures into the weekend. All right, Adam, thank you. All right, once again, the Spurs so close. Yeah, so, so close. close. Guess who came back to haunt us tonight? Boban Marjanovic. I would say that one of the most well loved Spurs <laughs> yeah. comes not, back to haunt us. Not tonight. Uh, <laughs> we come back, the rematch against the Mavs. The Spurs were in it until the end, but it was an inbounds pass, and Boban came back to haunt us just after Halloween. And how is UTSA confused with USTA or the United States Tennis Association? Coming up. All right, San Antonio Spurs started off tonight, down one starter after Jakob Pertl was placed and scratched this afternoon due to the NBA's health and safety protocols. Drew Eubanks gets a start in his place, delivers with a hook at the paint to give the Spurs a one-point edge. Devin Vassell with a one-handed punch right here helps tie the game at 28 after one. Maz would jump out to a 12-point lead off this Luka Doncic three, but the Spurs fight back. Lonnie Walker the four with a huge block. He starts the break, finds Vassell, by the way, in the corner for the three, and the Spurs at this point are only down two. Vassell with 14 first-half points. Final seconds of the first half. DeJounte Murray drains a step back three from the wing. Spurs are within one. 59-58 at the break. Vassell having himself a career night. The corner three puts the Spurs up 70-67. Then Vassell the jumper from the top of the key and Vassell has a new career high of 21 points with one more than a quarter to go. Keldon Johnson in transition takes it all the way to the rim to help the Spurs to a 10-point lead but the Mavs have cut that down to two to start the fourth. This would go down to the final minute. Spurs down three. Murray driving hard to the rim. Gets a bucket to count. The Mavs lead down to one. Spurs 
still down one with less than three seconds to play. They have the final possession. Keldon trying to inbound the ball, but former spur Boban Marjanovic is guarding him. So he just has to throw it up, hope for the best. DeJounte can't handle it, and the Spurs lose another close in 109-108. You know, it's not fun because we're close in all these games. We're there, but uh, we hurt ourselves. Uh, more than the other team hurts us. And so that's what we're trying to get out of. You don't want to lose games uh, because you didn't execute. All right, next up, a road trip to Orlando. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dak Prescott is listed as limited in the Cowboys practice report today with a strained right calf, but prior to the workout, head coach Mike McCarthy told us it was going to be a short practice since the Cowboys played on Sunday night, managed to pull out the 20-16 to victory without Dak, and win their sixth game in a row. What will McCarthy do to evaluate whether Prescott is ready to return against the Broncos this Sunday? Just really how he comes out of today's practice, you know, I mean, obviously it's, it's no different than any player once he goes through the, you know, uh, you know, release the play through the rehab process. So he's, he's crossed that hurdle. And so, you know, we'll, he has a certain number of reps he'll take today and we'll evaluate in the morning. All right, Cowboys linebacker Michael Parsons is named the NFC's Defensive Player of the Week for his 11 tackles and four tackles for a loss. And the Cowboys will wear a red stripe to go along with their blue and white striped helmets. This Sunday, tribute to veterans. For the Houston Texans, who are now mired in a seven-game losing streak, there's no official word if Tyra Taylor will return to the Texans, their starting quarterback this week, when they face the Miami Dolphins. The same Dolphins, who have a 1-7 and seven record as well, and do not pull the trigger on the Deshaun Watson trade this Tuesday. Now we're learning more about that. According to the attorney representing the 22 women who are suing Watson for sexual assault and massages, settlements broke down when Watson's legal representatives wanted the women to sign non-disclosure agreements. That turned out to be the deal breaker, according to ESPN. General Manager Nick Casario was asked if Watson's legal situation made it more difficult to trade him. I don't really want to comment on something that's sort of out of my control. So again, we just take it one step at a time and you know, just take the information as it comes and just try to make good decisions the best we can. In the end, you know, it wasn't a trade that came to fruition. The mistake the college football playoffs committee chairman made. <laughs> Next. No, UTSA Roadrunners, one of only six unbeaten teams in college football, are 11 point favorites when they travel to El Paso to take on UTEP this Saturday night. The Roadrunners are now ranked 16th in the nation, coming off their bye week, while the Miners are coming off their first conference USA loss against FAU 28 25. Even though those accolades, the chairman of the college football playoff committee, Gary Barter, mistakenly called UTSA USTA or United States Tennis Association. Head coach Jeff Trader sees the moment, tweeting now faces of his players over the top of the tennis stars. I mean, we're undefeated, so if you don't know, like, the school name by now, at least, you know, say it right, but, I mean, they're just poking the bear. Y'all know UTSA, we're, we're undefeated. Um, I feel like uh, there's a little hostility towards us um, on that, so uh, that kind of motiv motivated us today. Right, due to his success, head coach Jeff Trailer is in high demand these days. Today, he was the headliner at the Rotary Club of San Antonio, the Whitting Museum, where the man who just signed a 10-year, $28 million extension in just his second season at UTSA was a topic of discussion what was billed as a conversation with UTSA head football coach Jeff Trailer. That's something I committed to when I took the job, is for the first three years, I wasn't going to say no to anything. And I've tried to keep my promise. I, and, you know, it's a pretty full, pretty full schedule. Uh, but I've got great assistant coaches, I've got great players, and I love to work. And the more people that meet me, they might be interested in our program. And all of us have different abilities to give. I've said that a million times. Some people can only like a tweet, some can retweet it, some can give a dollar, some can buy a ticket, some can buy a suite. But some people have the ability to change places like forever with one check. And uh, you never know when you're going to make those contacts with those people. And oh, by the way, he has to go out and recruit too. Did I mention yeah. that part? <laughs> but I, I don't mind the theory of going out and being part of the community. Not at all. That's yeah, perfect. That's yep. great. Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back.